Hey, it's Sean Frangella here for PremiumBeat.com on how to create this 3D house model in Cinema 4D using some cool new tools. So this is a final render that I did of this little house idea. And if we look at our project file in Cinema 4D, here's what we got going on. There's this 3D house, and it seems like there'd be a lot involved in making this. But one of the really cool new things in Cinema 4D R16 is this house builder that makes this idea of building a blueprint 3D version of a house a lot easier and really customizable. So let's work with that and get started. I'm gonna make a new file. And then where we can find this is if we go to our content browser in R16, presets, visualize. And if you ever want the whole browser, you can go to view, tree view, because I like this actually. So uh, visualize, presets, tools and helpers, and there's this house builder. And if we go to that folder, there's a house builder object and some room styles for textures, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. So what we can do with this is double click it. And this brings this customizable house builder object into our scene and pops open this little modal window to help us do this. And what this is, is a fully customizable thing specifically to use for that sort of, for making 3D house models. And you can do some really cool stuff with it. So how this works is we have this whole object and if we're anywhere on it, we get this dialogue box and we can, to start with, do things like turn on and off walls and floors, change our mode from room to mesh to blueprint. So let's leave it on room. Turn on a ceiling, which we don't need. Turn on x-ray, if we had a ceiling, need to see through it. And solo room, which will make sense when we get to rooms. And then we can change the height of the house, the wall thickness, and the floor thickness. And how we could get started with cutting this up and making some rooms is if I look from the top view, there's this whole object. If I just want to make this more of a rectangle, say that that's our blueprint like this one that I already built out. I can use T for transform to make this wider. And then how we can make different rooms is, I'll go in my top view. There's again, these select slide and knife. If I go to knife, it's going to select my knife tool and it's going to let me make cuts and that's going to make the rooms and build them. So if I hold shift, it's gonna make exact rooms. So let's say this is our main living room and we got two bedrooms. And then let's say there's another cut that goes straight down and then let's do a little corner and maybe that would be like a bathroom. So if we do that, it's just gonna cut there, just this little cut and maybe one more, more room, why not? And if we look at if we look at our perspective view, now it's cut those and built those out and kept the walls and built it all. So it's a pretty cool way to get started. And now if we wanted to further adjust that, say it's not you know exactly a perfectly rectangle house, we select slide tool, we then click on edges and hold left and right and shift them in. So I get shift this, maybe it's kind of a more abstract shape of house and if I, hold shift, I can select multiple ones and then slide this up and say, if I just wanted this to be kind of angled, we can do a lot with these knife and slide tools. And I could even grab this one and get kind of this weird shape. So maybe this is the master bedroom and has kind of stranger shapes. And here's a little closet and we can really customize this and make some really unique house shapes. So it's not just set to, you know, exact rectangles. You can really do some really cool stuff with it. But houses have, you know, windows and doors, and they've considered that and built it in too. So if we wanted to cut out some doors and windows in this, there's this whole door and wind null. So what we can do is grab any spline object. So let's say we just wanted to make a front door. If we grab our rectangle and kind of position this and scale it how we'd want it. So let's grab a rectangle, and then we can do width and height about that, and then just press E and let's move it and it's kind of a narrow door. So let's pull that down. And what we can do is drop any spline object into this null and it's gonna snap to the edges. And then we can look at our front view and move it around. And it's going to always snap to the edges. So if I get to this edge, you can see it automatically snaps to the side. So this is a really helpful way. So if we just want an interior doors now, maybe this is our front door. We could hold command and drag left to make a copy of that. And then if I get close to this wall and move it this way, it's going to know that that's the wall. So I can just make two doors and you can see that those are cutting out. And if we wanted some windows, it's the same thing. So I could maybe grab something else. Let's, I don't know, make circle windows. Cause why not? If I scale this down, maybe there's some circle windows. If I drop that in, 
it's gonna cut those out. So maybe there's, you know, an interesting design over this door. There's a little circle window above it. And then let's say there's some normal windows so I can, again, duplicate this whole rectangle and I'll scale it over. And I can even turn on rounding. Maybe they're slightly beveled windows. And it does a nice job of, you know, making this really easy and customizable and not having to worry about getting tripped up with settings, but really just thinking about what you want this to look like and doing the rest for you. So I can, again, just copy this. And there's another window. And again, let's say that there's one on the back. Maybe there's a big sliding door back here in addition to windows. So here's a back window and I can just duplicate this whole thing. And then that one, I'll turn off rounding. And then I can just scale this really big. So maybe that's our big back door. Just drop it into place. And it does a really good job of just cutting that out. So already very quickly, we have a house, some windows, some doors, made some bedrooms. Now what we can do is really customize and build some quick textures in this. So if we click create all room style, what it's done is made this group of rooms with different annotation tags for each room. So if I select them, I can select each room and you can see that there's different settings for just each room, including the molding and some selection tags for textures. And why this is useful is because there's in the content browser under this house builder, I mentioned there's room styles, which has some pre-built groups of textures that'll automatically set the tags and a custom one. So how this works is say that we wanted this style with kind of this wood floor and white walls to be on here. If we have a room selected, let's say room four, which is this main room. If we go to our content browser and double click, it's going to snap those textures onto that specific room and automatically set the tags. If we look at these textures, they're setting it to ceiling, wall inside, floor, and floor molding. And if we go to the room, you can see that those are laid out too. So you could pipe in F for floor or C for ceiling. And then you can grab these. So this is, so we made this a little taller, but what we could do is actually make it seamless and that will fix that issue. So it's really customizable. And what's really cool about this is say we wanted to add that to the rest of the rooms, we could just same as any textures, we could just grab all these, hold command, drop them into another room, and then we have all the same textures and tags. So let's do that on everything except room one, because we'll do a little something different there. We can see we've already very easily textured this whole house, which is cool. So say we wanted our own textures because there's just these couple built in, which are great, but maybe that's not what you want. You can build your own pretty easily, not only by just building textures and dropping them and setting the tags, but also with this preset. So if we up here, double click on this custom room style. I'll double click that. It opens this file and this is a pre-built preset with these textures. So say if I wanted to make something new, let's say, you know, the wall is actually dark red and the floor is neon blue for whatever reason. And our ceiling, we won't worry about because we're not using that. And let's say the, the molding will be, you know, black. Now what we can do in our preset browser, create a new preset library and I'll call this rooms. And then that's going to show up in the tree structure under presets. So what I can do, and I already made one here, what I can do here is if I just undock this content browser, so I'll do undock, I can actually just go to my objects, drag this in. So I'll call this new room and just drag and drop it into these, this room folder I created. And now I'm going to have a custom preset of this. So now what I can do is back in my main project of my house, rather than setting these up and assigning all the tags, I made a quick little preset. I can just grab that room, double click this room, and it's automatically going to snap it. So probably not the best design rules to make the floor bright blue, but you know, it looks cool and it works automatically and you could change the textures from there. So if we just want to make this, you know, interesting lighting lit well, we could just add a floor and drop one of these on. And let's say just, you know, drop a light above each room, give it a little color, turn on shadows, and we could just duplicate these for each room. So we get, you know, a little bit of lighting in each room. And if, and if we do a quick render, we can see that there's our house. We built it really quickly. We got our bright blue room. We've cut out some windows and you could do a lot with this. And if you look at our final render that I put together, you know, it only took a couple minutes, but it looks pretty solid and it's really customizable and you can really get a good start on building this sort of stuff and then do all sorts of animations of houses building and rooms dropping in and it's a great little setup to get off the ground with building a 3d house 
So this has been Sean Frangella for premiumbeat.com teaching you how to create this 3D house model. Be sure to stop by premiumbeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on premiumbeat.com for tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other apps. And if you want to see more of what I do, you can check out seanfragella.com as well as subscribe on youtube.com slash seanfragella. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to all Premium Beat channels on YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation tutorials, and I will see you at the next video.